So a lot has been going on with Haiti, um, and they're basically in a state of emergency. Um, the prime minister was basically ousted uh, after meeting with uh, Kenyan officials to bring in some help into Haiti amongst the war that, yeah. and a lot of the crimes and the governmental, uh, you know, the lack of governmental stability there at this moment since the um, assassination of our president um, two years ago. So um, with that being said, so right now there's a lot going on. Um, it's funny because just in January, I remember conversations. There's a meeting with uh, Kai Caricom, I'm trying to say that in, in my American accent. Caricom, there's a meeting without any true Haitian represent representation there, which I thought was problematic, which they mm -hmm. were going to, and included US, France, um, Canada, Jamaica, and two other countries, I believe. And um, they all got together to discuss the state of Haiti and what that was going to look like in the future, um, how they're going to go in and help. Kenya has since backed off on um, sending in um, some uh, militants to got a massive stop offer the from games the US to in, in Port-au-Prince. Yeah. yeah, and so it's funny because I say this to say that a lot of okay, so the US in January said they didn't want nothing to do with it. I remember when a lot of Haitians were trying to come to the country um, and they weren't able to come in. Uh, after the the assassination of the president, I where you live, Rebecca. I'm just curious because I'm in South Florida, so it's yeah. more like no, I'm zero. from I'm from South Florida, okay. um, but that's where all of my family is. is yeah. in Haiti. Okay. Uh, actually in the capital. I'm just right asking because it is so huge right here right now, and mm -hmm. Sheila Sherkowitz McCormick, our representative, has been like doing everything she can to like talk mm -hmm. to community stuff. So yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. I was just curious if you were connected to South Florida. Yeah, no, I am. Um, yeah. I'm from actually West Palm Beach, so um, so uh, that's where my mom and dad live at the moment, but. All of my family is pretty much in PAP, which is Port-au-Prince, which is a lot of where a lot of the stuff is happening. So um, a lot of this, the the news has been reported that's now being reported. And I'm glad that it's in mainstream media, but it's this has been going on for a while. Uh, when we heard about Ukraine uh, and Russia, this is basically what was has been happening in Haiti, even with the Dominican Republic. We've been literally at war, but they don't. The United States doesn't want to declare it as that for us. So, um, you know, we haven't been getting mass deportations. A lot of um, unalived people um, from the Dominican Republic, our border, they're sending people over, they're killing people, they do all of the above. Um, and that's been happening uh, because people are looking for what? safer environments. They're looking to just better themselves. Do they want to leave Haiti? No. But the conditions right now, especially in the city at PAP, is just unlivable. They can't. There's a, there's no, there is no stability. They don't have any kind of leadership, that true leadership there. Um, and so when they tried to come here, we know what happened. They were all sent back. Um, but Ukrainians, which deserved also to come here because of what was going on when they got the opportunity, uh, they got a little bit of a red carpet treatment. They got grace. They got, you know, there was acknowledgement about what was going on with them. And the U.S. didn't want to acknowledge that. In January, when uh, Haiti was asking for some type of assistance, uh, they said they wanted nothing to do with that. They're not going to touch it. But now, during this time where there's no kind of leadership, Haiti has come, not Haiti, uh, the U.S., as, as much as they had their their hands in a lot of the things that are going on in Haiti, uh, the U.S. now wanted to have conversations and allegedly urged, even though they now said that they didn't do so, but they urged um, the prime minister, Ariel Henry, to not to step down um, and for them to basically fund come together and take control over Haiti. And that's what Haitians do not want in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say um, a lot of the connections with Haiti, like South Florida, um, like Florida itself with Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, we know what's going to happen in this time. People are desperate. They're going to find ways to try to get out of there and go to any border, any whatever they can. And I know because I had family members do this as well um, to go get help and whatever that looks like risking their lives to go through jungles um, in Chile, um, through Brazil to get to Mexico. Now I'm saying all these things because that's out of the way, but this is their routes, right? Um, to come and do that, to get to a Texas border, to be met with border patrol and treated like slaves at the border. Um, this is what 
Governor Ron DeSantis is now trying to put in place as well. He wants extra security uh, um, on the southern border um, amid what's happening in Haiti, saying that he doesn't want people to come here with what's going on. There's like he doesn't want to give the help, um, and whoever comes there is going to be turned away. Like they're going to be shipped back immediately or dealt with, put into you know, like to me, I call them like little concentration camps. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for Haitians down in, in you know in, in Florida. This is exactly how, to me, black immigrants are always met. And I, uh, I've told the story millions of times about, and the, under that Texas board um, bridge um, a few years ago when they were coming here uh, seeking asylum. And uh, my cousin called me and I was going to do the work to go pick them up. And I spoke to the woman who was housing them at the time. And it wasn't really housing, but giving them food uh, and giving them um, advice uh, about what to do. They didn't speak English, so I had to speak for my cousin. She was saying she never seen anything like this. She's been doing this for a while. People come to this border all the time. They take them in. They tell them what to do. But for some reason with Haitian immigrants, Black immigrants, it's just like they are treated the worst. She was saying she's never seen anything like it. So I I just want to bring that out because what's happening in Haiti right now is not different than what's happening in a lot of these other countries that are going through war, that are going, like, so gangs are taking over. They, there are militants, groups, bad people, governmental crisis. There's no leadership. All of that. You know, people are saying that Haiti uh, is the the Gaza of the Caribbean. Like, and I can't unsee it, unhear it. I know. I am connected to it by blood. I have people there right now who are fighting for their life every single day. We can't do nothing about it. If it's not governmental crisis, if it's not, if it's not the like the actual war that's going on in there amongst the people and the government and the government that isn't there, um, you know, if it's not that, we have the environmental crisis. We have all of these things, and where all of these other countries will come and take advantage of what's going on in Haiti. And say that like they're Canada. helping them build up money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can name so many of your favorite activists. I can name your, uh, uh, like, all of these people, um, uh, the Red Cross, all uh, Hillary Clinton. This is why y'all always hear me on here that's, and say I don't, I don't fuck with Hillary Clinton because I know what Bill happened there. If you guys Google, yeah. Bill Clinton sat before and apologized oh, yeah. about what him and his wife did in Haiti. Yet that hasn't gone viral. That didn't make mainstream media. None of that. But he he literally admitted to what he did in that country, in my my mother's land. Um, but, you know, this is why I say, you know, they'll take advantage of it. They'll take an opportunity. They'll take land from people. They'll take money. They'll say that they, they will raise money and partner with people like the Red Cross and build, what was it, six homes. Hillary Clinton and the Red Cross, six homes during the earthquake. So this is why a lot of the Haitians are like, we are in such a crisis, but we don't want that to come and assist us anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. Um, So we need actual help that's going to make sense for the country. Um, And so there's a lot of rhetoric going around. But I want people to understand this is just as any other country going through something. Um, There is a lot of bad hands at play. There are people who are want to take take advantage of of of, of Haiti, um, almost obliterate it so that they can restart and take control of it. Why? Because Haiti is the first black republic that gained its independence, right? From France. And we had to Free pay revolution. for that. That doesn't sound logic. It's not logical, but we had to pay for our independence and keep it there. And while we did that, we helped other Latin countries, we helped American states um, get their independence. And we are still treated like the bottom tier. No help. No nothing. Nothing at all. So, um, uh, you know, I just wanted to bring that, uh, you know, because I know a lot of people are like, well, how do you feel about it? Because I am Haitian and because I am dealing with it. I did want to ask you about that. Is your family okay? Yeah. Yeah. My family, if I say that they're okay, they're doing their best. Now, I couldn't. I can't imagine. I'm not there. But I do hear from them. And what's going on? My brother, uh, my oldest brother who moved here not too long ago with his children, he goes back all the time. And the way that he has to go back is in an an illegal manner. Like he, he, you know, he has to go to a country that don't like us, 
Um, and I have family that lives in that country for safety, but, and they have to live in a certain area. And I'm talking about the Dominican Republic. They have to live in a certain area to be outside of harm's way because what Dominicans are doing to Haitians, um, and that's the closest area that they can go and um, seek safety. Do they want to be That's always been a problem. Mm -hmm. It's that's always been a problem. Always been a problem. It's <laughs> always been a problem. Um, I have um, a family member that just got to Chile. Um, and if I tell y'all how she got there, you know, I, you know, y'all wouldn't even believe it. So yeah, no, I um, know about the whole thing between the Dominican Republic and mm -hmm. Haiti, how they treat them and how we yep. treat them. And, you know, I grew up here in the seventies. So like, I remember the, the Mariel boat lift and I remember, mm -hmm. I know I've seen the difference in how we treat Cubans versus how we've treated mm -hmm. Haitians here. Like yep. wet foot, dry foot, you call whatever the policy you want to, but just in general, it has always been just so stark. The, mm -hmm. the difference. And it I noticed it when I was little mm -hmm. and it has always been the case. And I have been saying this forever. It is just unbelievably wrong. Yeah. Um, have one policy, have one policy. Mm -hmm. It should be like bus tickets instead of airfare, right? Like everyone pays the same price instead of like, they can sort of pick and choose and like different people, different things. But no, they treat, we have always abused. There's people. nothing, there's nothing. Even, you know, when Donald Trump was president and how he called it a shithole country and people oh. ate me alive when I covered that story um, because I was so passionate about it. Uh, and I'm like, this is the same country that literally helped the United States. Even when the United States literally put their foot on our necks, still assisted the United States when they needed assistance to free some of these states to get the like a lot of a lot of these states came to because of Haitians. And we didn't so forgive you. That's the bottom line. We are not going to forgive Haiti for yeah. having independence. We for are having the audacity to get independent. Correct. It's how dare these slaves? Mm -hmm. How dare they do that? And so we will then punish you, cripple you financially for eternity mm -hmm. and treat you like horribly. And I, um, I have been seeing how we treat the Haitian people in South Florida. I can only speak for down here, but always bad. Always yeah. bad. It's always been embarrassing to me. Like, this is just not, it's wrong. Yeah, it is oh, wrong. It, and the Clintons used it as like some sort of slush fund for the Clinton Foundation. Oh, yeah. And and, and this, this is why I say, like, I tread lightly about that. I don't give a damn. Y'all know I don't cuss so much on the show, but I really don't give two fucks about Hillary Clinton. I don't care if she's a woman. I don't give, I don't care what she's done. I don't care about the emails. I don't care about that because right. I know what she stood for, what she's done to my country. And um, I know even following that, like her husband sat up there and apologized for what he did, but this an apology is a recognition. It doesn't do anything for what already happened. And he's not the only one. Like I said, this is thing, this is historically because we had audacity. So yeah, they always, they used us to assist other countries have used us to assist them and freeing themselves, including the Dominican Republic. Um, all of that, their flags have our colors on there because we helped free them. A lot of Latin countries have that, um, you know, look it up. It's historical. We are very strong people have resilience and all this stuff, but the way that what's going on and how they want to just say, we've always been the poorest country in the Western hemisphere, because that's how the United States and mainstream media always around the world always um that's what they start with when they talk about haiti instead of it being the first black republic of well we the, benefit the world. we so, benefit from you being suppressed exactly so, and so it is what it, i mean like that's it's it's again i feel like it's just you've been be, they've been being pun you not you but um haiti's mm -hmm. been punished for daring to not want to be that. And so mm -hmm. we will now like same way we punish Cuba forever in a day for something that is really not anything anybody should be punished for. But Haitians have just been always treated horribly. I just, I, it's so, it's so glaring to me and yeah. I, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. And, and, and I remember when I was going off about uh, what is it, title 42, they utilized it for Ukraine's. They adjusted it for Ukrainians to be able to come in and do their thing. When Haitians were like, Hey, can we come in on title 42? Even Joe Biden decided, Hey, I don't think so. We're going to pull back because uh, we're going to use it under the guise of coronavirus being spread into the mm -hmm. country. But then when I'm like, there's a stark difference because Ukrainians 
what's the difference? Like they, they're coming from other oh, countries. We know. They're coming here. But the, yeah, the, the, the difference is one one of the communities are white, one of the countries are white, and then one of the countries are black. So um, and so you gotta stick to your guns on that one. And I, I don't care, like I said, and again, I don't give a damn, I don't care who it is. It's Trump or uh 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 Joe Biden. The action is like this is what I'm seeing. You guys are choosing there, and there is no reason. There was no reason given. It was going under the guise of coronavirus, Ukrainians uh at uh, the same time. The coronavirus is a thing. But you guys wanted to help. They needed the help. They needed that. And so do Americans, but right now, I mean, um, Haitians, but right now Haitians are like, we don't even want to, we don't even want to mess with people on the outside. We need something. They're willing to go, like, even Russia, they're willing to get help. They do not want it because historically what United States has done to the country. So what's so, the best if, thing? What can we do? Like, what's the best thing for people to do right now? Mm -hmm. So right now, I would, for people in Haiti. Like, so right now I would say to, this is what I'm going to say. Mainstream media is going to post these, like, a certain type of rhetoric, a certain type of narrative. I would say- Gangs are taking up Haiti. That's what every mm -hmm. headline says right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gangs, you know. Yep, that's what it is. And, it, and that is yeah. true. That's not the only thing. Why is this happening? They're not giving the why. They're not giving all those things. So follow pages like Jean, um, Jean Dues. I don't even know how to say that in English. Jane Dues. Um, uh, faces of Haiti. Creole, a great man. Job. Creole. It'll be like the death yeah. of me down here. I cannot. You see, yeah. <laughs> Haitian Times oh. is they're following it perfectly. They'll give you what exactly is happening. And I'm saying if you can't get it right now, nothing can really go into Haiti the way it's going. A lot of organizations cannot function right now the way it's going. Because I'm going to tell you this there are a lot of people, gangs are doing their thing, and gangs are being funded by governments that are, um, connected to the U.S. government. So how they're moving and stuff like that. This is, and this is not, I'm not making this up. This is not conspiracy. This is actually what is happening. Um, you know, and they'll see um, American officials there. Nobody knows that they're there, but they're walking the streets. They're doing, this is what's going on there. Um, and so, but there are a lot of Haitians who are like, we can't. So they're outside risking their life every day, fighting against um, um, uh, these uh, uh, officials. They're at the airport. They're forcing officials out. They're trying to do this, but it's being viewed as almost like looting when... Um, we're fight. We're outside, and we're somebody. A black person has been killed at the hands of an, an officer. And what Literally, they're going to do is they're going to immediately so. go into looting and say, "This is what black people are doing." This is and not like so. There are this is a lot of what's going on. But follow play like what I've been following is I love the Haitian Times. They got boot of um people on the ground who are covering the story, who are putting themselves um in harm's way, um who are witnessing people get unalived. All of this stuff is happening every day in Haiti. So follow Haitian Times so that you can see what's going on, know what's going on, properly educate yourselves and advise yourselves on what's going on. Um and uh, I think that's what I'll ask you guys to do first. And as I get information that I can do. That I'm and as, do. yeah, and as I connect to organizations, uh, official organizations like I did a couple of years ago, where I was collecting things to send into Haiti, where I and knew they would know get who there. You have yeah. to know who you so, can yeah. trust. So right now we're there. not there. We're not there. I'm not there. So I can't okay. give you guys that right now. But y'all know I'm good for it. And when I do get that information, I will let y'all know. But right now, if you want to know what's going on properly. Right. And you want to get the like to educate yourselves correctly on what's going on instead of just going with what mainstream media is dropping on y'all. Uh, because right now all of Haiti is not in that. But the city that that city where everything is, we don't even have a White House anymore. Right. Uh, we have no actual leadership. The person that was supposed to take over while Ali Al Henry um, only has stepped down, Guy Philippe. He can't even go in and um he can't he can't qualify as a president. So they don't even want the people to have a word in what's going on because they're saying that they don't they're not qualified to have a, like the the citizens of Haiti that we don't want to hear their voices. So they want outside voices. And I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, I know that's very problematic. That is problematic to me. As much as Haitians um, may have a hand in something that's going on, like we all do in our communities. This is the thing. People want to say, oh, it's Haitians. They just, they just, whatever. In everybody's community, everybody is a problem, okay? So what we know now is that doesn't mean that we don't deserve help. That doesn't mean that we, we deserve to be stomped all over and viewed as as whatever. We know historically they want to keep us down. I just hope 
because what I'm seeing now is very stressful. These days have been super stressful for me. What I'm seeing now, what I'm knowing now is just like, almost like how with the way in the state of Haiti right now, it's almost like if I tell you guys, I can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I'll be lying to y'all. I'll be lying Is to you. Is there any faction or any group? Like, I, I, I'm going to just go and do a ton of research on it because, like, I feel like it's if it, it, what would be the group of people that you're thinking? Is there any group of people there that has the interest of the people there and is trying to yes, establish? There is, but they're not. Every time they're coming up to speak, they're being pushed down because right. literally they have, they will come up with a group of people. They have, like, there are people in it. This is what I want people to understand. There are people who are qualified in Haiti. There are people oh. who have actual, um, my camera, they have actual like ideas and policy that they want to put in place. However, because the powers that be, they are not going to allow it. They have no voice. They have nothing. They look at Haiti as a small country that just isn't worth it. It isn't worth it. And so that's what um, is going on. But like I said, educate yourselves on what's going on. Please check out um, the Haitian Times. Uh, if y'all want to know what's really going on, it's a great page. Check out um, Faces of Haiti. If y'all want to see more, more than just the issues uh, that surround Haiti, please check it out. Um, well, I fixed my camera, but please check that out. It's, 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 that's going to help you understand where Haiti is and what's actually going on. I'm posting the link to Haitian Times' Twitter in the chats for uh, everyone to see. So uh, there was an interview with a group called Black Alliance for Peace on Democracy Now. They were also quite good. They're trying to do oh. work apparently in Haiti. I saw that in the chat as well. I saw someone mention yeah. that. I've, I've mm -hmm. heard of them. I think we had somebody on from with Black Alliance for Peace. I want to thank... I think Margaret Kimberly is somehow affiliated with the Black Alliance for Peace in some capacity. Because that sounds very familiar to me. Anyway. But listen, the people that are trying to um, right now take over Haiti, it includes France. And mind you, mm -hmm. we gained our independence. We, we rebelled against France. That's how we got our independence. And we had to pay for that for life. So that tells you everything you need to know. Okay, so that's one of the groups um, that want to go ahead and take over, um, you know, and who told the world that we weren't worth nothing. Um, and, you know, they're they're like, to me, Israel, when it comes to Haitians fighting for their life, um, you know, France to me is, is similar to because they have the power. They are well known. They have allies everywhere. People are afraid to go against France um, and Haiti to everybody else is just a, a little community, a little country, a little island country in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, we're very powerful. We, we, we that's how we gained our independence. A lot of other people gained their independence because of Haiti. So, um, but what France gave the world is that we don't deserve. We are not, you know, we're just less than, and that's how the world continued to view us. Even other countries in the Caribbean continue to view us. Um, so uh, they don't care what happens with Haiti, but of course I'm one person and um, I'm biased because I am Haitian. I care. I care what happens to Haiti and Haitians in my family. Um, so, and I care how people discuss it. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and make sure I clear the air, I clear the room on how that camera, that conversation will be had if I'm ever in the room. Um, so, yeah.